All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the June 3rd JS Core Team Weeks Weekly Sync. Uh, Alan is out, so I will be stepping in. Vashko, thanks for taking notes. And we will go ahead and kick things off. If you haven't updated in the crypt pad, please do that now. Um, we will run through and talk about what we did last week, what we're blocked on, and what we're going to be doing this week. All right. And I am first, so I'll get started. Um, yeah, last week was pretty much all preparation for IPFS camp, uh, doing a little P2P workshop for that. Um, I'll be continuing on that this week. Presentation is mostly done, so hopefully I should have most of the work finished in the next few days. Um, and then I will be starting on finishing up a draft of the Autonat spec. Um, Autonat is currently in Go, and while we're putting that in JS, we need to actually get the spec written out. So I'll be working on that this week. Um, last week helped out with an issue with the IPFS interop. Um, the Go RC was having some issues. Um, so we worked on that. So that is fixed now. Um, ended up creating an issue as related to that with the switch. Um, in switch, when we dial, we currently blacklist based on peer, but ideally we would do, be doing that by multi-address since addresses for peers can change over time. If we're doing a dial back off and we learn a new address, we don't want to completely have that peer blacklisted. Um, things like AutoNAT and auto relay will help us improve our addresses over time. And so making sure that we're actually doing that will be good. And yeah, and then if time permits, I will also work on um, getting that auto network started in JS. Any questions for me? No, all right, uh, Vashko. Hey guys, so last week I mostly work in the, the PubSub module uh, with the integration of the Gossip Sub. Uh, basically, uh, the, all the other modules were not running uh, uh, tests in the browser. I don't know why, but uh, I enabled the, the browser tests in all of them. Some issues appeared, but I fixed them all and I also created the PR for enabling the tests in uh, Gossip Sub JS. Uh, also, uh, in the flood sub, the benchmarks were also updated, and I also updated them. And uh, uh, in the with the new release for Goal p 2 p and uh, with the issues that uh, uh, Jacob described, I also updated the Goal p 2 p version in the lip 2 interrupt tests, and uh, everything wa was okay in that side. Uh, so I'm currently blocked in a IPNS test for IPFS interrupt. Basically, what is happening is that uh, when uh, a recent PR, uh, I think from uh, Alex, uh, upgraded CIDs from uh, 0.5 to 0.7, something uh, is broken just in Linux. And uh, basically, um, an IPNS test is breaking. Uh, just in Linux because of uh, the CIDs I'm trying to figure out, but if uh, any of you have ideas, it would be welcome. Um, so for this week, uh, I will continue working uh, with for the Gossip Sub integration. Uh, basically, we are now missing only um, tests for uh, having a hybrid network with uh, both uh, Flood Sub and the Gossip Sub nodes. But uh, there is also a problem with that in Gossip Sub, so maybe I will tackle it as well as do tests for that. Then, uh, regarding the interface connection, I didn't have that time last week to get any more progress on that. But this week, I want to at least integrate the proposal in one of the PRs for the sync iterators migration or for TCP or for the WebSockets one. And uh, yeah, and more sync iterators work if I can handle it. And that's everything for me. Any questions? No. All right. Thank you, Vashko. Next up is Volker. So um, I've been working on some of the uh, multi-format stuff to clean up things a bit, because um, things like multi-streams isn't an actual thing. Try to get it removed. 
and also making multi codecs cleaner. So um, I will also put uh, the PRs in there. So if you want to have any opinions about it or yeah, want to chime in, please do. And then uh, I've created um, I've uh, there's an IPLD graph with um, script to output um, the an IPLD deck basically as graph with, and I just changed it a bit to also output parasol for those who don't know it. It's just a JavaScript thing to visualize graphs. Um, and I just wanted to see how it looks like. Uh, I figured out it doesn't work well for DAX, but yeah, it was a nice try anyway. And next I will work on, again, the my Geo stuff, the stack stuff on IPLD. And I will look a bit into uh, uh, WASM in regards to IPLD because we want to experiment a bit with it there and yeah. And that's all I have. All right, any questions for Volker? No, all right, next up, Jim. So um, just more working with uh, Lydell Hugo on Course C. Um, got the, uh, I, I just gave a demo in the weekly talk uh, about the uh, HTTP signed exchanges and I built a Docker image uh, with all the, the little signing bits that allows people to uh, with a GitHub account to go in and try out this uh, demo and they can publish some content and if they have this extent, uh, extension loaded, they can view content um, using this new feature in Chrome. Um, let's see, and that's revealed a bunch of issues I probably need to investigate um, that might be uh, other bugs. Um, I'm still blocked on IPFS cluster issues for peer based pinner. It sort of fell over. Um, I have to, I'm, I'm sort of think I might try to set up my own IPFS cluster just to see if I can understand what's going on there. Um, so this week I'm going to dedicate mo some time to IPFS camp. Um, I had a bunch of things I wanted to do with Test Lab, and I was talking with David last week about um, content discovery and um, trying to get some something going on that to see if we can get some testing around that. Um, and um, I'll try to dig into these bugs, which uh, I seem to be able to reliably trigger. So um, that's it for me. All right, any questions for Jim? OK, next is Hugo. guys I'm gonna share my screen just to show you some stuff real quickly um, this one. okay so what I've been doing uh, I did the uh, rubbing fingerprinting version using was which uh, you can see the link that I'm going to show you here. So basically, I used, uh, I uh, implemented uh, this module uh, using assembly scripts um, and basically ported the, the, the library we have been using until now, written in C++ to assembly scripts, compiled it to us and made it work in the browser and node. Uh, because the old one uh, didn't have ma ma much maintenance and will, with no 12, part of the 12, uh, it didn't work. So we needed some way to run Robin. Alex already had a JS implementation, but as you can see, the WASM version is uh, way faster than uh, the pure JS version. And uh, one nice th thing about this is if we get this merge, it will be the first one was module going into the JS IPFS code base, which is pretty cool, just in my opinion. So let's see. Uh, also, I'm uh, preparing uh, JS IPFS and the HTTP client for a new uh, age version uh, and also adding some 
some new stuff, which is electron tests. A uh, JSRBFS is already passing um, all the tests in the main in the main process and in the render process. Uh, HTTP client uh, is still airing out in some places, but at least in the main process of Electron, all the tests pass. So I hope, hopefully I'll, I'll manage to fix everything and have both, at least both these, these repos running green inside Electron, either in the renderer or the main process. I also have been doing some sessions for the IPFS camp courses with Lido and, and Jim. And also I've been working on uh, the DNS resolver for IPNS. And for the this week I'll probably just do the DNS resolver and the camp sessions and hopefully fix these electron errors. Let's be any questions? Nope. Cool. Thanks. All right. No questions then, Alex. Hello. Uh, so over the last week, I've been trying to push some of the async await PRs forward a bit. So I've got all the, uh, well, the FS level and core data store ones out, which was cool. Uh, a bunch of the work had, you know, had already been done. Uh, but like just the PR seems to have um, stagnated a little bit. So I was taking on some of that work and updating them and, you know, addressing the PR comments and all that kind of stuff. Um, so all the data store ones went out. I've been working on the uh, IPFS repo one. Uh, still a few more things to do about that, around that, about like making uh, functions async, even though there's no actual async in them, which is um, interesting, but you know, the documentation says that's what the API is, so we should probably do that. Um, so yeah, I also moved house, which was really time consuming. Uh, so that was tedious. Uh, so next up, I'm going to merge Hugo's uh, Rabin Wasm PR, because that is super exciting. Um, like it's the kind of thing we could probably just get rid of the uh, compiled version, because, um, you know, the C version, because, uh, like having to compile native modules is one of those things that makes it hard for um, new contributors to get involved with the project. And they're like, oh, well, I need to install Xcode. I didn't know that. You know, after they worked out that that's what they needed to do to solve all the weird problems they're getting. Um, so to remove those native modules would be fantastic. So, you know, it is slower, but is it that much slower? Um, anyway, so that, that's the thing. Uh, Dirk has a PR open on Mortis that I've Got about. I'm going to merge that. I'm really sorry. Uh, my inbox is an absolute car crash. Um, I need to spend some time working on the lib P2P uh, workshop for IPFS camp. Um, the idea is to have like some kind of graphical representation of a node's view of the network, which would be super fly. Um, Going to work on the npm in a box for the uh, IPFS camp science fair. I actually have npm in a box right here, although ironically it's not in a box yet. The box is being shipped from China and it hasn't arrived. Um, but anyway, it should have, it's dispatched, so it should get here soonish. Uh, yeah, I'm going to then, if I have any time left, uh, try and sort out the npm and IPFS deployment that needs upgrading. Um, and I finally got uh, access to all the AWS stuff that I need. I like a cardboard box. I was actually going to 3D print one. Um, you know, worst comes to the worst. But, but yeah, anyway, uh, so I got access to the AWS stuff that I need to deploy NPM and IPFS, not on uh, a bunch of Docker containers on one machine. I can put it onto, you know, XYZ compute thing. Yes, cool. Uh, that's me. Any uh, questions? David. Uh, David. Uh, what, lots of exciting things happening. And I know there's a lot of things going on in preparation for the camp, but I, I wanted to ask anyway, um, is there any plan to get the blog post that describes how to store tons of data um, on S3 with IPFS uh, before camp or is that for future? 
Yeah, I mean, the, like, what I don't want to happen is for people to see the blog post, get all excited, and then try and hit them with an IPFS, and it's not as fast as it could be. Because we've already got like some weird, you know, we've got some some stuff. Uh, so like the PR that's open against NPM itself, like the stats in there are, you know, pretty slow. And anything that doesn't contribute to this idea that IPFS is slow, I think is a good thing. Um, so I really want to get it like as fast as possible before people start hitting it. Um, a part of that will be the deployment. So once that's done, I think it would be in a much better position to publish that blog post. What about just using YPFS for as a backend? Would that change anything in terms of like speed? Um, that's some that's on my list to experiment with to try and see if that makes it faster. Because it would definitely, you know, uh, in the absence of the JS DHT, uh, then you know it would definitely make things more discoverable. It's on the list. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions for Alex? Yeah. Oh, okay. Dirk, you didn't add an update, but do you want to give one? Oh, you don't see it? I don't. Oh, it's, um, maybe it's frozen. Oh. Uh, but go ahead. Oh, sorry about that. I'll make sure it, uh, it gets in there. Um, so, yeah, this week I was just working on a couple of bugs with the DHT and BitSwap. So one bug in BitSwap was uh, kind of a security issue that will basically write to the disk anything that anyone sends to us. So I just changed it so it'll actually check that those things are in the want list first, which is what the Go implementation does. And then with the DHT, um, when we were providing, we were sending to all the providers a list of all the providers instead of sending to all the providers our own CID saying like, I'll provide this. So just the way it was implemented, it didn't actually matter if we're just talking to a JS DHT, but talking to a Go DHT, we wouldn't be providing the correct uh, CID. So yeah, it wouldn't have been possible to actually provide anything to a Go DHT. So hopefully that should improve uh, DHT performance. Um, and then I completed a garbage collection implementation. So that's uh, ready for code review. I think with IPFS camp, it might be a couple of weeks before the code review is, is done. Uh, but a community member just reached out about half an hour ago saying that they really want to use it. And so I'm going to try and get them to kind of test it out in, sorry, it's New York out there. Uh, I'm going to ask them to try and test it out in a, a real world environment, make sure it works. Uh, I created an issue for profiles that is basically just like a nickname for a bunch of configuration stuff. So we can have a profile for like browsers for low power devices, like mobile devices um, for running in a data center or whatever. And finally, I'm also working on reviewing a repo migration tool. that has been created by a very helpful community member uh, who's been putting a ton of time into it. So trying to help him with that. And then next up, I'm going to work on the implementation for profiles. Any questions? No. All right. I think that is it for updates. I'll move on to cross team updates with Lytle. Uh, just a quick shout out. I've been mostly working on IPFS camp stuff and stabilizing stuff that we need for courses, but uh, I managed to squeeze out a new beta release of IPFS Companion. Uh, so my ask is to install the latest beta that I linked in the notes and let me know if anything is wonky. We want to stabilize this version before IPFS camp. And there's like a re related uh, development so that uh, Brave. I demoed it on the other call, but it's so cool. I will demo it here as well. So uh, Brave Nightly is like a super developer uh, ch channel uh, from the Brave team. And if you run Brave from the channel and you go to settings uh, and you scroll down, you see that uh, Brave comes up with uh, web, web torrent support and Hangouts plugin out of the box. And now, IPFS Companion is there as well. So you can uh, install IPFS Companion that way. 
without going to any app store. And it's the same version that is in the Chrome Web Store. So that's more or less my update. Awesome. Any questions for Lytle? Nope. All right. A few other notes. Vashko is out on the 10th for a public holiday. Volker is out for a few days in there. And then Alan is out this week. Uh, so if you need anything from him, you will probably need to wait till next week um, to do. And then we do have a few more people on the call. Uh, Terry or yeah. Prabhakar? Yeah. Sorry, I can only, can only hear the phone now, so I don't know if I'm interrupting. Um, I am kind of back part-time-ish now as things start to get a little bit more settled with the family. So uh, my big priority right now is getting that MFS tutorial published on Proto School, which is super close. We're kind of at the proofing stage. Diogo did some work on it while I'm out. Um, so Alan has taken a quick read through before he left for vacation and Dietrich has offered to do some testing this week. If anyone else would like to volunteer to be a guinea pig and run through and see what you find confusing about it, just reach out to me. Um, it's my understanding right now that the only, of all the people creating workshops for camp, that the only person planning on doing anything with Proto School is Alan who's planning on using the MFS tutorial. So if any of you on this call are doing something thinking you're doing proto school, please reach out and let me know so Diogo and I can kind of schedule in enough time to give you the help that you need this week and next week before we're all in Barcelona. I think that's it. Great. Any questions for Terry? Nope. All right. Uh, Prabhakar, did you want to give an update at all or are you just Please. hanging out? Uh, so I've been working on a couple of minor issues. Uh, adding flags and stuff like that. So I've just been working for two weeks now. Uh, I found a little bit of problems uh, doing uh, bigger issues. There are not much descriptions or it's not very beginner friendly and stuff like that. Uh, also finding it little difficult uh, for getting responses from Alan is, I think it's really busy. Uh, and, uh, that, that's what I've been working on. I'll see if I can get more work done this week. Are you taking any, as you go through and you're like hitting these obstacles, are you taking any notes or posting any issues? Uh, I think it's a little bit difficult uh, debugging things also because uh, after I push the code, it takes like half an hour to one hour for build and stuff. And then finally it fails and I have no idea what has gone wrong when I see the logs also. And yeah, and I have to look go really deep to find out what's the problem with uh, things breaking up in different part of the code, which I've not even worked on. So those parts are a little not not very smooth, I would say. Okay, if as you're going through that stuff, if you would even just like post an issue in the repo and then just tack on your notes as you're kind of going through and have issues, that would be super helpful because then we can look at okay, what are issues that we can resolve quickly to get quick wins? And maybe there's some stuff that we can post um, as far as like isolating tests that could help with debugging. Dirk? Yeah, I actually opened an issue um, about making it easier to contribute to, to JSIPFS. So um, it would be super helpful uh, if you could post your, any, tr any troubles you're having or any, any ideas you have about how we can make that easier. And yeah, the sure. other thing I'd say is, um, you know, firstly, thank you very much for taking the time to contribute. And secondly, um, when you when you see an issue that you, you think you'd be interested in taking on, but there's not enough information, please feel free to just say like, hey, okay, you know, where should I start with this? Because we have a lot of knowledge in our heads. So, you know, maybe we can just sort of get you started on it. Okay, cool. All right. Does, I think that's everybody. Does anybody have any other questions, comments? Dirk? Um, yeah, I was just wondering, uh, so there was quite a bit of discussion in the last few weeks around the DHT and kind of that being ready for, for different products. Um, and I was wondering, are we sort of like tracking that? Like, uh, do, we, do we have a plan, I guess, for, for how, we, how and when we're going to release it? I... Uh, 
Yeah, so I think we, I don't think we still have the awesome endeavor for that. Um, we should have an issue for tracking that. I know right now the major thing is getting the config update and then doing some testing on that. So we should get an issue created if it's not already created and then list out those items. Um, I will take that as an action of what we need to get released. Bashko? Uh, I think there is an issue or a pull request from uh, Alan in JSAPFS repo. Yeah, for re-enabling the DHD. But I think we need to follow up in there for, because um, there's some config updates I was doing and then we need to actually do I think also resync up like that one day we jumped on and did the depressing DHT discovery call um, locally while connect to bootstrap the failed um, I think going through and doing another some more practical exercises of that uh, additionally would be helpful to at least verify that we have what we need there um, yeah, and I think there's a a, some additional stuff that we probably want to do um, previously talked about that we should add the issue for tracking which was adding for for the CLI for anybody running that, we're probably going to need to do um, some keep alive for that. Otherwise, the if a DHT query takes longer than 60 seconds, which if we're running against a lot of browser nodes, it could take that long. Um, if we run into that scenario, the, the socket will time out on the HTTP API, and then the CLI will just fail with the socket hang up. So I think we should make sure that that at least stays open for the duration of the query. Yeah, we may need uh, re-providing as well, right? Yeah, so Go does that, runs the reprovide. We'll need to add that to JSI PFS um, because I think the default timeout is one day. So that will get cycled out of the DHT. So right. I think you'd mentioned that Go does a 12-hour reprovide because yeah. otherwise, yeah, we can't automatically do that in the DHT because we it doesn't know if we have the content or not. Right. Um, so we'll have to do that in IPFS and then make sure that if we do any deletions, that we're also removing that reprovide logic. Yeah, I guess like, I think we all know kind of like where it's at, but um, it will be good for someone, you know, cause a lot of people are asking about using it. It'd be good for people who are external to have like a roadmap and say, okay, this is what's missing. This is what they're working on. And the other thing I'd say is that I think we should not rush it because, um, you know, the Go DHT kind of got released and thousands of people, literally thousands of people are using it. And there's all sorts of different versions out there with different bugs. And so, you know, that makes it difficult then to like the DHT is, is, is a huge mesh and network of, of nodes that have to interact cooperatively. So like we have to try and get it as good as we can and as bug free as we can before it becomes widely available. You know what I'm saying? Yep. David. I agree uh, with what Dirk is saying. Like this work requires very extensive test testing, and, and like we've been talking about it for a while. Uh, that's like why projects such as the Test Lab have been like thought through and tried multiple times to make sure that we have a testing ground to to check these things. The the thing I would add though, like so, if you go back to the issue about like achieving connectivity magic, like the DHT is really just like one piece of the puzzle. Um, like. This is just my intuition, but I would expect that like most users of JSAPFS, which will be browser nodes, will actually be more interested on using delegated routing, right? So think think about like someone like is using it on a browser, like they are used to go to ipfs.io gateway, like they are used to use a go ipfs node to search for the content. They're pretty happy with it, like with JSAPFS, like if they can get a, a node in the network to do the heavy work for them, rather than waiting a very long time for a browser to do like thousands of connections to relays, I think will give like a better user experience. And like ultimately that's what people want, at least for the, the first web application. They want to get the content. Like it's not even about like, is this like doing every single step that we envision? Um, and so get, getting the delegated routing out of the door and like making sure that we have the infrastructure monitoring to ensure that like that is always working or at least like a status page that like checks, hey, like are the relays working properly? Like are um, the, the delegated router nodes working properly? Are the preload nodes working properly? Um, so that people can like rely on 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 those hates to to um, like get content on their apps. Um, in in and again like the VHT will always be very resource intensive for any just previous node. And so it should be like a a second solution and like a backup solution, unless like the specific application that is getting developed doesn't want to rely, like rely 
primarily on any kind of deployed infrastructure, right? Um, so I guess my question is, how far are we from saying that we can deploy delegated routing and like trust that and like to talk to users, like that that is what he's doing underneath? Yeah, I think for delegated routing, we have the support there. The biggest thing is getting support on either the gateway nodes or dedicated nodes to actually turn on that endpoint because that kind of got lost in the deployment shuffle when we were kind of moving infra team people around um because yeah. that was originally going to be like a deployable configuration but now it's just run on startup config so i think that's something we just need to resync with uh it on getting that configuration actually deployed somewhere because right now it's if yeah. you go to ipfi IO, it's it's no longer deployed there. Like I think the beta was originally when we were playing around with it, but it's not anymore. Got it. So so uh, yeah, in, you got the lost in translation. But like again, like from from the perspective of like getting from like no solution to a solution, like I, I believe like that's way closer. Uh, as Jacob is saying, like there is already like tests and like. The, the thing works just needs to get deployed. So like focusing the DHT energy on getting this piece of infrastructure done, uh, we will like save us all from many users that try the thing and fail and give up and go away, right? Like, uh, yeah, this is just like my, my recommendation here. Just making sure that we, we, we don't lose all the options. Um, that, that makes sense. And I, you know, I think that's, we definitely want to try and give our users the best experience possible. I just want to confirm one thing. Are we, um, th this is like the delegated routing is kind of like a, a short to medium term solution, right? Or are we, or are we thinking that's going to be the long term solution? It's an option. So like the way that the peer to peer was designed was to make sure that like we can like have multi of these plug and play, right? So, and so for delegated routing, you have the peer routing that is delegated just to find the peers and to connect to them. For content routing, like if you think like for example, the Internet Archive, like would really benefit from having like just like a database on their side where they have like all of the ashes, all of the, the, the things that they are providing because they have like 40 petabytes, like serving all that to VHT is just like m massive number of connections. And I think that they have to serve, provide 40 petabytes every 12 hours. That's just like, man, I just do the bandwidth and <laughs> my account and, and like you see how many it gets. And so getting like delegated content routing where someone can just say, oh, like I want to access like the Internet Archive data set. So I'm just, every time I do a query that is within this data set, I'm just going to ping at endpoint like to know like where it is, will make the experience much faster. And so it's not that the end game solution, it's one of them. And, and like in the future, what we should expect or what we should create is a platform where users can understand like what is the, the, the flavors, right? Like what, what is the, the, the pieces of peer 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 that they want to use in IPFS and like the toppings and like just pick the solution that like has different guarantees from guarantees of speed, performance, bandwidth usage, storage usage, uh, privacy, censorship resistance, and so on. And like ultimately, like you should almost have like a machine where you click all the buttons and say, okay, here's your like, I know, ice cream cone with all the toppings you want to hear with peer to peer bundle, right? And just like, no, no, you use this and like, like it's the, the feature set it has. Mm, the P2P ice cream. <laughs> oh, um, so what I can do is take as an action item to, for the DHTPR that's open, create a more meta issue for tracking all of this stuff that we just talked about, like direction we want to go and what stuff needs to get done for that, and then what other options are available in terms of that for like delegate routing and whatnot, just so we can keep track of it and have that visibility. There is this like achieving connectivity magic issue. Like uh, it's totally okay if it's like too messy right now and close it and like create a new one. But but I think it's worth to do um, to just like look at it yeah. before opening a new one. So I'll just like post it here. Let's find it. There you go. Fourteen fifty nine. Yep. Yeah, I'll go over that. As well okay we are slightly over time so we will go ahead and end it there um and we will see you all next week for another exciting episode of core dev weekly sync bye everybody <laughs>